Well, hey guys, Brenton from Backwaters and Backroads, obviously. So we are working on the Beagle Barge today. My buddy Mike is showing up in a few minutes and we are going to spend the day hopefully putting in the entire solar system. He's really good at it and hopefully all the parts showed up from Amazon and I've been slowly collecting them inside and we're going to get to it. Uh, I'm going to make a video of this really soon, like this weekend. This is the Nimble Vagabond 20 that I picked up for a song with a Honda fuel injected 50 on it, if you can believe that. So, uh, but first, let's work on the Beagle Barge. <laughs> busy, busy. Fall is always like this. Winter's bearing down soon. So let's get started. All right, guys. So today's the day. My buddy Mike and his oldest son, Diami, has showed up and we are going to install the solar system and the Beagle Barge here. So what are we starting out with today, Mike? Well, we're going to start with getting the batteries connected up and then get a master switch for them. Uh, from there, I want to get the charging system set up so that we can start putting a charge to them. So when we start putting the loads on them, they'll have a nice little charge. Even on a cloudy day, you'll still get a good charge. So Sweet. Well, I'm going to be paying close attention, guys, because i got to learn this stuff myself. So let's let's get on with it. Right, guys this is some of that nickel and dime stuff if you want to do it right it's going to add up this is believe it or not about a hundred bucks worth of hardware all stainless steel marine grade uh, to, to mount these panels so now we're going to get to it <laughs> guys i'm going to show you this real quick so this is old aluminum fencing that uh, was salvaged actually from Lost with Mike down in Alabama. He got a bunch of it and gave some to me when I was down there last winter, and I'm finally finding a use for it. As long as it's working good, that's what counts, right? Yeah. So what are these, Mike? Well, right here we're making our own cables. We've got a uh, we've got a punch crimper. That you put these uh, cables on. This is one aught cable. It's uh, quite honestly a little bit of an overkill for this size of a system, but uh, it's always better to be a little bigger and a little smaller here. And that's what ties the batteries together. Yeah, it'll tie the batteries together, and also be the main cable source to the power inverter, which is only 1,500 watts. So we're talking a hundred amp draw at the most, and I think these are rated for. Don't quote me, it's anywhere from two to 400 amps. So you never have to worry about them getting hot or anything like that. Like I said, a little bit of overkill, but sort of very robust setup. Okay guys, I'm gonna narrate here for a second. So yeah. these are the leads coming off of the panels. The panels are tied together, is that correct, Mike? Yep. And then we're coming in and we're gonna put it, uh, this is where it's gonna, Connect to the charge controller. Yep, right, right over there, the wall, the charge controller, and then the charge controller down in the battery bank. And who knows, it might get a little. Sun's kind of going down right now, but you might see a little bit of charge here in a few minutes. Okay, Mike was explaining something kind of important. Yeah, this is um, this has to do with running power in parallel series. If you run parallel, you basically you'll up the amperage, and if you run a series, you'll up the voltage. 
So we have both going on and it's just a small four battery bank. These are six volt batteries. And so what we do is we connect, we go from the positive of this terminal and then here's the backside of the battery to negative. From this negative, we go to the positive of the next battery. And so instead of getting this, as you'll see, if I just connect this, that's six volts right there, right? As you'll see. But now since I tied this battery together with this one, it becomes one solid 12 volt battery because it added the two together. Now we're at, well, it's a little under 12 volts because it needs a charge, but yeah. but 12 volts. Now, parallel is it, I got the same thing with the battery back here. These two batteries run together in series, they equal 12 volts. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do here is we run around parallel now, and that means the negatives of both, you could call this a single battery now, is what you're going to do. This so is all, a single all battery. four create one single battery. Well, two single batteries. Okay, make two 12 volts. Make two 12 volt batteries, and then we're going to make them work together in parallel, which means we connect the negatives on both of them together and the positives at the ends of both of them together. So if we, they were in series, they would be, they would be two would 12 be volt, volt battery, a one 20. 24 volt battery. So okay. this is two 12 volt batteries in series, uh, parallel in, in series. Okay. They're, they're in series to make them 12 to two six volts into 12, the parallel to make two 12 volts into one 12 volt. Because we have a 12 volt system on right. this boat. Okay. Right. Gotcha. I, I got about half of that, but I, it's, that's more than I, yesterday. So, <laughs> okay, Mike, what do we have? It's kind of like a moment of truth here. Yep, we're about to wire this in. Go ahead and uh, throw it on the positive side of that battery bank. This will go live. There you go, 11.8. And uh, what we're going to do is once he gets that bolted down, I'm going to go ahead and throw the charge cables together and we'll get this thing maybe. Maybe seeing a little something. Okay, so we just plugged it in. I just plugged the panels in. And you're right now, even though no sun's hardly hitting anything, we're getting 15 watts of charge at 70. Let's go. 15.6 watts in the uh, voltage of the panels combined, which are running in series, is uh, you know 75 volts. That is so cool. I'm so just yeah, kind of like getting charging right now. Let's see what the average. I'm going to be so entertained just going down the river watching those numbers. <laughs> Free energy. So 1.2 amps of charge, like a trickle charge right now at what the sun's coming in at. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we're going to wire in uh, our switch. We do have a uh, 200 amp fuse set up down here. So we go from the battery bank to our 200 amp fuse, from the fuse block to this. And then from this, it's going to go to the inverter, which we're going to mount right on the back side of this wall. And then from there... Uh, before we obviously kick this on, we'll have to wire in some AC wiring. We're thinking uh, just two two uh, socket boxes up in here, and we're good. That's about what you yep. think is good. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from there we'll we'll kick on the power, and we'll have some juice in here. Okay, guys, I think I'm the useless one in this 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 endeavor. Wavy and Wavy and I are both useless. <laughs> Mike, Mike and his boys are kicking ass. I'm watching and trying to learn something. But Mike, why don't you tell us where we're at on this project? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have the back blocks, um, what you call bus bar blocks, on the back there, pretty much wired in with the batteries to those, the switch to those, the fuse to those. And now we're getting ready to tie in the inverter, which we just found out is actually an inverter charger. It does 70 amp charge back feet. And, and Brenton was asking here, could he do a shore setup? And I was like, well, you kind of need more equipment, but it turns out we don't. Because this thing will have wired, so you just plug in a shore on this, and that'll back feed the. Uh, that'll let this thing run as a charger, and an a, a still an AC, and run AC to the boat. Mm -hmm. um, so another way awesome. to say another way to say that, Mike, is it have kind of like a extension cord coming out that I could plug into a generator and I can back feed some power into the batteries and such. Yep, yep. You'll be able. Yeah, it'll, it'll back feed us. You know, up to seventy amps charge to the batteries. Um, which is nice because that's that's a, a kick kick butt unit. That one, uh, for those who know, that one's actually just a modified sine wave. Um, and a lot of people prefer for maybe a higher. That's a high end unit, but it's not high end tech as far as uh, a, what's called a pure sine wave. A lot of people are going pure sine wave, but that's still a very high end unit as far as it'll give you it'll give you clean power still. But um, I'll but I'll put a link below, guys, to that unit there. Yep.
What you doing there, D? Looking up the outlets. All right, we're all juiced up. We got power. We're gonna hit the switch. Give it a test. Go ahead and crank her on. And we got juice down there, and we're gonna just hit this little button there. And we're plugged in, and we'll see if we got juice to run off grid on this an angle grinder here. Go ahead. There you go. So the power we got. <laughs> All right. So we just got the awesome feature, which is that this is an inverter slash charger. Mm -hmm. We got the charger feature working. And what we did is we wired in an old extension cord here, and then we plugged in what we got utility power right now plugged into it. This light right here, just for instructional purposes, will blink once every four seconds to let you know that A, you're still getting power to your outlets, but B, you're also charging your battery bank. And as you see right here on the amp clamp, we're getting 38 amps of DC current charging back to the batteries while also passing through the AC current to the boat. So this is a very simple plug-in shore power way to charge the batteries and still have AC power in the boat. <laughs> and then once you unplug that, it'll go to battery mode and just auto everything's automatic. And I can even plug that into a generator when I'm out on the yep. water. As soon as you plug in a generator, um, when it's running off a of battery, this will blink once every second. When it's running off of shore power, it'll blink once every four seconds. Green is obviously good. And you got the two amps, 14 volts. Mostly 14 volts because of the uh, inverter charger. But. Okay, guys. So this is day three on the solar install. But we haven't been working all day. Just a couple hours here, a couple hours there. But we got a lot done today. And I'm going to turn the phone around and let Mike take over. And he's going to explain to you what we've done so far. Welcome to the solar boat install here. So right here you got your 6-volt batteries like we went through before. We got two 6-volts running in series. And another two back there running in series. And then paralleled into a 12-volt system running extremely heavy zero gauge actually i thought it was one gauge but zero gauge nice fuse fusible link right here as soon as it come off the system then it's coming back here actually if you got the light on and you can show the uh let's see if the i can show. back there let's see if i can i don't know if it's too dark for you guys to see this but it probably is yeah i think it is <clears throat> I'll try and get some footage and yep. put and it then, in there. So back there is where all the wire splits off for the loads. And one of the main loads comes right here to the switch. And uh, when this is on, it turns on not only the, um, or my bad, sorry. The fuse, the fuse goes straight to the switch. The switch goes to the distribution block back there. And then from there, the load. So this master switch cuts everything off in the batteries and uh, that's what it turns off and then we got a distribution block here which we're gonna run all the navigation lights navigation equipment uh, you name it right now you see you only got one load set up on it and that is for all the lighting on the walls um, all LED lighting five massive lights and uh, wires will get cleaned up later mm -hmm. some molding yep I'll show you guys real quick and go down here and parallel. Lots right? of lighting though. This thing's gonna be light up nice and bright at night. Yeah. We put this one over in the corner because there's gonna probably be a flat screen TV right here, guys. And then one the back side in the bathroom here. And then yeah, we got the uh as you saw the panels up on the top are uh piping in through this charge controller right here. And then this charge controller is going straight to the bank as of right now. We're kinda undecided how we're gonna maybe make it so you can switch it off later but for right now it's still a good time to leave this on all the time so the batteries stay trickled off and then uh oh yeah looks still pulling in uh 23 watts of power with no sun hitting the panels but you want to tell them a little surprise we had about the uh, the inverter yes so i originally looked up this model i was actually with brent when he picked this up and i said uh you know that's a, that's a good model magnum's great and I thought this was just strictly an inverter. And some of these uh, inverters have a, a feature that actually charge the battery well when you hook up, say, shore power, utility power generators. And it turns out this one did. And, you know, funny enough, Brent had asked, hey, is there any way we can hook up shore power in here? I was like, well, you would kind of need other equipment on top of just an inverter. 
But then when we started pulling out the wiring on this, and sure enough, there was actually, this was a built-in charger yeah. too. So we ran a, uh, a simple old cutoff extension cord, hardwired it in there. And so now when you get short power, you plug this in, it doesn't even interrupt the AC power on the outlets here that we, oh yeah, we should show the outlets yeah. too. Um, so we put two outlets, AC yep. outlets. Yep. I'll show you the other one down here. So that should be enough. You know, if we want more, I suppose we could always add a couple, right? Yeah, you can add, uh, you know, you can add quite a bit. It's a 1200 watt inverter. Uh, I was thinking it was 1500 watts, but it's actually 1200, but that's for what you use. You're not going to run any heating or any cooling, like AC units or something like that. That's going to be plenty for your TVs, even a refrigerator, charging anything, laptops, you even, name it. even a small fridge. Eh? Oh, that, you can I, can, I put a little fridge. apartment size you fridge in here. You a full size fridge. Like my home fridge at home only takes 125 watts. I'm that's, totally that's putting like 10 a, of that. I'm totally putting a small fridge in here. Yep. I'll, I'll finally have a fridge. Yep. It's just like, uh, <laughs> like a coffee pot that might stretch a little bit. Coffee pots usually run about 1300 watts and that might be a little too much for that. Um, but other heating devices, you know, like the induction cooling teapots and stuff, those are about 700 watts. So you just gotta, you know, look at what your wattage use is, how much that puts out. And the best thing about this whole system, the way it's set up, is everything's fully upgradable. You can, all the wiring and everything is overkill. So if you wanna bump up to a 24, 48 volt system or a much bigger 12 volt capacity, mm -hmm. A higher end, or not higher end, but a higher wattage uh, inverter charger. Everything is available to be upgraded here. So, and and Mike mentioned something about those other batteries. Yeah, well, what I'm talking about with Brenton here is, uh, you know, lead acids are kind of on the way out the door. Um, they're as far heavy. As solar and... system, yeah, they're heavy. They're very delicate when the way you got to, you know. Make sure they're always topped off with distilled water. You always got to make sure you babysit them that you're not overcharging, undercharging them. Their capacity, you're only allowed to use about 50, well, you can use what you want, but if you use more than, say, 50% of their rated amp hour capacity, they just get destroyed right away. And so the thing to do now is go to lithium iron phosphate. And the prices on that, you know, if you're getting them over from Alibaba or China, they're, they're coming real close to the lead acid prices for usable amount of power. So for instance, if he's got, like, say, 200 amp hours of battery here, well, he can only really use 100 amp hour Otherwise, it's just going to wreck these batteries and stretch them out too much, and they're going to have a short lifespan. He could get a 100, 150 amp hour 12 volt system for about the same price as this, and he could use, let's say, 150 amp hours. He could use 120 of that amp hours, beat them every day like that, and they're still going to work great for 10 plus years. Wow. And then another couple of positives and negatives versus lead acids lead acids off gas when you equalize the batteries you got to overburn some of the plates off so it cleans the sulfur off the plates when you do that they let off a gas and then here it's not a big deal because you're going to have a lot of air and you only do that like once a month but on a lithium ion uh lithium iron phosphate batteries they don't have any of that you don't have to worry about that they're a little more um uh, they're a little better when it comes to temperature changes and stuff and they're lighter too right and they're a lot lighter oh yeah tons lighter um yeah, they're just they're so they're so much more superior in the price now. There's really there's getting to a point where there's not an excuse now not to start out with a lithium iron phosphate. Uh, right about in the last year, really, is when that excuse I would say it's kind of being extinguished now. But so if if we do an upgrade later, it'll be from these to you know lithium iron phosphate mm -hmm. and have that footprint with half the weight and you know quadruple the capacity that, that sounds good mm -hmm. and and could you just get a give a quick overview of how someone burns off the plates every once a month well what they do is um all your charging systems that are multi-stage they they'll sometimes have what's called the equalization stage so a 12 volt system would normally do a bulk charge at say 14 and a half volts well when you want to burn off the plates you They'll, these charging systems will raise the voltage up to about 15 and a quarter or so. And what that does is that causes the plates to boil. And that's where you get the off-gassing from. How do, I, how do I do that? How do I get them to do that? Um, I'll have to check. I don't know if this charge controller has that feature on it or, if or not. But I can go through. Um, and also this. We'll have to check on that. Okay. We'll have to check. Some people just don't even do it. But it's good maintenance. And that's where it comes in, where you have to fill the batteries up too. So. Okay, gotcha. But we'll have to check on your equipment as far as which one will or will not do that. Yeah. Okay, so guys, we're if the if the lake is calm enough, Mike's taking his boat and his family out, or at least some of his family out. 
to the fire steel tomorrow. I'm going to follow them along with the Beagle Barge here. and So we're going to get some more footage. And, and we've got a lot done today. So fist bump, Mike. Sweet. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome setup. Yeah.